Thank you very much for joining me again on this broadcast. I want to share with us um, what I would like to title the power of choice. The power of choice. In some ways it appears that um, people who excel in what they are doing uh, just stumble into it. I mean, many people would like to think that way. Many people would like to feel that um, life had already been predestined in terms of who you will become, maybe what you will read, you know, in school, the kind of course and um, the kind of person you will be that God is totally in control. God decides he has already decided when you will die and so many things uh, of that nature but I just want to share with us uh, this thought and let us know that God wants to walk with us God wants to walk with you but it, it appears we do not understand uh, for some time now, what is rolling in my mind, in my heart, is the ways of God. The ways of God. God is not a random God. Sometimes I just sit down and think how difficult it is to believe in evolution. At least, on my own part, I find it very difficult to bring myself to the point where I can believe in evolution. Because the world is too intelligent. The entire um, creation, I mean, look at if for any reason maybe you cut a part of a tree, you know, the stem of a tree, and you leave it for some time, for as long as it's in a conducive environment, it has intelligence programmed into it not run by any computer you don't need to supervise it because it's put inside of it it's in its seed and if you take that seed to another location and plant it in a conducive environment it will reproduce itself so if you chop a part of the stem of a tree by the time you go back there and say give it some weeks, some months, depending on the type of tree, you discover that it grows and covers, it heals. It has that capability in itself to heal itself. Now, that also happens in the human body. You do not know how babies are formed in the womb, Bible says. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 22, I read, But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I would not. Now, let's take it from the context. If we start from verse 21, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain but if I live in the flesh this is the fruit of my labor yet what I shall choose and I want you to underline the word choose what I shall choose I would not in other words I do not know precisely I have not come to the conclusion what to choose. Verse 23, for I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. I have between now and then two choices. I am in the midst of choices 
and never a time has there been options to choose from in our time. I'm between choices. I could sit down and just watch my TV and pretend nothing is happening and pretend I don't have a challenge. I can choose to just flip from one page to the other. I can choose to just while away my time. I can choose to invest my money. I can choose to use it consumption. I can choose to be a blessing. I can choose not to do anything. I can choose to just be one person that is known for arguing about everything. I become so known for being controversial. You know, there are even interviewers, there are some that ask the painful questions because they have cut out themselves for that. There are those who ask probing questions. There are interviewers who ask questions to bring out some hidden truth. There are interviewers who ask good, the feel-good questions. Now, all these depends on the choice. And how do we make our choices? We make it after we've consulted with ourselves. But at this point in the life of Paul, Paul was in betwixt. Why is that? Because whichever way, something great will come out of it. However, one was greater. But out of a choice, he decided to stay with the one that was not as good. Philippians chapter 1. Let me continue from verse 22 and read on. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, choose. That's what we're talking about, choice. What choices have you been making? What informs the choices that we have been making? We make our choices based on the values most of the times we choose the things we choose out of the sentiments we have and we always you know many times after we make our choices and our decisions and then we look for the logic to explain why we did that but often we do that based on the emotions the sentiments, the feelings we have towards these things. So verse 23, For I am in a strait between two, having a desire, did you hear desire? To depart. He actually desired to depart for a reason, and to be with Christ, which is far better. Verse 24, Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh. Did you see that? To abide in the flesh is more needful for you. One is better for me to abide in the flesh, to stay, to allow myself to still be carried about, to allow the real me to be carried about in the flesh is needful, not for me, but for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you, all for your furtherance and joy of faith. There are people who have this understanding that even to live longer, you can make a choice. You know, some people have been so battered by life. Things have happened. A lot of challenges. And they are just fed up with life. They are tired. So at some point, when the next thing just happens, they, make, they decide. I do not want to hold on anymore. Now, these 
is one this is one of the conversations that take place in the human heart do you know we all converse with ourselves many of the things that we come out to do and either excel or fail many of them are done first and foremost on the inside we imagine ourselves unable to do we imagine ourselves not suit not fit not capable and that is also even worse when the mindset the theology is that you can do nothing i have been pondering on that bible passage where peter and um, john where the disciples said silver and gold have i none but such as i have so you have something didn't Jesus say, I will not leave you here as orphans? You have something. Being able to confirm that, being able to validate, being able to ascertain that this is what you have. Now, not of your own, not that you make this thing, not that you create it, but that you have something is what I want us to confirm first. So Paul knew he had a right, he has, he has the ability to choose. He has the, um, let's leave it at on right. He has the right to choose to stay on a life, even though that was not going to benefit him as a person, but he chose. However, he did choose. He chose it because it was needful for the people. And here why it was needful. It says, knowing that I shall abide and continue with you all for your fatherance and joy of faith. For their fatherance, for their progress, and for them to have more joy of faith. He was alive to encourage them. He was alive for their sake. He could have decided, time is up. I got to go. They are people who have come out of very unbelievable experiences because they have chosen to stay alive. Because they have chosen to stay alive. So God in, in, encourages their staying alive. Now, many times we say, um, when you pray, this will happen. It's not that God is just going to do something that time. It's that as God, he has already put things in their places. If you believe. If you believe, and then you pray because you believe. You are going to key into what has been put in place, and that is going to produce result so it's not because i am praying now i make god to do what he wouldn't have done or he had no plan to do is that god has put more than enough in place and the wisdom of it is that most of the things that will happen in the next year they are um, to be achieved by the God factor and the you factor. I have to participate. I have to willingly participate in the things that God wants to do in my life. Human beings could hinder what God had in mind to do. I'm talking about the almighty God that made us. Human beings could choose not to be part of what God had originally planned for them. Human beings could choose to just idle away. Human beings could choose to just lounge around. 
Human beings could just choose to be traveling from place to place just so that, you know, they satisfy their curiosity, which hardly get satisfied. But let us note the one thing that most times things happen because we choose to be involved. I always like this story that I heard about um, an elder that was visited by a pastor, their, their pastor. So the pastor stopped by their house and then, oh, he saw a wonderful garden beside the house and he was really impressed and he said, Elder, what a garden that God has by your house. The elder was smart and I like the elder's response. The elder said, Yes, Pastor, I wish you saw this garden when it was only God that owned it. I rest my case. When it is only God that owns your life, not much happens. When God gets your cooperation for the things he has said will happen in your life, God says to a child, you will become the best surgeon. And the child doesn't want to go to school, doesn't want to submit to learn from those who could teach him, him or her. And the child wants to do his or her thing. God will not force it to happen until he is able to get the cooperation of that child, male or female. So it's not because he's a male. Oh, it has to happen. It's not because it's a female. No, it has nothing to do with the sex. It has something to do with the choice. And most of the things that are happening in our lives have come as a result of choices. Choices. I choose. And we shouldn't be afraid to, to talk about making choices. Now let me read for us one more Bible passage. And uh, it will be very nice that that one is going to come from the Old Testament. Exodus. Exodus chapter 19. And I read from verse 9. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men. I want us to mark the word choose we're talking about choices here choose us men and go out and go out fight with amalek tomorrow i will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of god in my hand and as you continue you discover that this entire scenario was was full of choices decisions deliberate steps moses said to joshua choose and that is bold choose us out men don't just do things because others are doing don't just pack people and put into the into the thing just because they are available. But make a choice. Choose the people to work with. Choose the people to move with. Choose the steps to take. In business, they call it strategy. And strategy is not, you know, as some people think. Some people mix it up with the goals they have set. Sometimes some people misunderstand the strategy for the goal. Some people misunderstand the vision for the goal or mission for the goal. Or for, you know, strategy is the sum total of everything that you have combined and prioritized and the mix, the entire mix. They all, they all the activities that you bring together to achieve the goal. Strategy. So you see the strategy is full of Choices full of decisions, steps, specific things. So as much as God is almighty, many times, did I say many times? God hardly does much on this planet earth 
that something that he wants to achieve in the life of the individual without your cooperation. So many times people want to mix up how they feel with what God is doing in their lives. Sometimes, yes, how you feel could reflect what is happening in the realm of the spirit, could reflect what's happening in the realm of the soul. But most times, we, the how we feel has no bearing with how God is because you could feel the way you feel because of what you ate last night, because of how you spent last night before you went to bed. You could feel the way you are feeling because of various things that could happen. A lot of things could have happened that make you feel the way you feel. It could be biological, it could be hormonal or whatever. But what I want us to know is that the, the sum total of everything that will happen will depend on the choices you and I make. God will not superimpose his long-term plan on a person who has not chosen to walk with him. You need to choose. I need to choose. What do I need to change? I need to make that choice. I need to make the choice. I am, I love speaking to myself. I love preaching to myself. And many times I like recording it in case somebody else wants to be a part of this. Praise God. So you see that the people were not just randomly picked. We're not people they just stumble into. We're not people, they will say, incidentally or accidentally, I bumped into this person and we started the program. No, they had to be chosen. Choose us out, men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Specific instructions. But to be able to execute it, there's got to be choices. There's got, you need to make choices. Don't be afraid to make choices. Don't leave things to happen on their own. And after that, you say, you see, I think it was the, the will of God. You need to be sure. If it is the will of God, you need to be sure. So you can approach it confidently. You see, in the case of Paul, he said, this is the confidence I now have to follow up this other plan because it's going to enhance your furtherance. It's going to enhance your progress. And it's going to bring you joy in the faith. It's going to add more joy to your faith. And so I choose to stay alive. Isn't that interesting? People think that everybody who checks out of this world does it because it was God's timing. Many of those people had chosen. The only problem is that you did not hear when they made the choice. Because it was from the, their heart. They chose it by themselves. And so they decided to Shut it down. Well, um, I intend to continue with this, um, but I want you to know that God has ways of doing things. And many of the things he will do, many of the things he has done, many of the things he will do, in fact, there's hardly one thing God will do in your life that you will not be a participant but you will need to choose do i want to follow the private program of god if god forces and imposes his program on all of us then not one person will disobey him then it will be wrong for god to think of judging anybody but god will judge god will bring everything we have thought of spoken acted out he will judge because we have the right to choose. He has designed us to be able to choose. He created us to be able to choose. To choose to obey him. Choose to do what he wants us to do. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy. Verse 30. I mean chapter 30 verse 9. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Set before you life and death. 
So many times people choose death. And they want to believe that it's that's how, how God wanted it. Blessings and cursing. Isn't that interesting? You can choose blessing. Isn't that interesting that people can choose cursing? Therefore, he gives the wisdom, the spirit. He advises by the, by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. If we ever think of the love we have for our children, you know, many times people will compromise. Many times people will go the extra mile. Many times people will do things they wouldn't have done ordinarily because they are thinking about their children. There are people who make huge sacrifices. There are people who push themselves beyond what they are capable of. Why? They are thinking of their children. They are thinking of their upcoming generation. They are thinking of posterity. They are not just doing it for themselves. Like in, in the case of Paul, he was thinking of his spiritual children. And on that note, and given, you know, Thinking in that line, look at this. He says, therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Now, doesn't mean that we're going to just close their eyes and die. Is that their lives will be marked by evidences of death. It will be marked by curses. And eventually curses destroy. You know what I think about this world based on the word of God? Many people have chosen curses. Many people have decided to do things that will not allow what they are, they are working, laboring for. That will not even allow the upcoming generation to enjoy this life. Eventually, the system of this world, as shiny, as attractive as it appears to be, this is the conclusion. The system of this world will destroy itself. Because even um, those you think should be emulated operate as much as they want, doing as much as they want, packing everything all for me, me, myself, and mine. And people hardly think of what does the Creator want of me. You and I have a chance. If you are hearing this now or you are hearing it in the future, I've met my point. I've delivered the message that was in my heart to share. Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose between death and life. Choose between blessing and curses. You can choose. Choose to stay alive and not just to be existing, but to be a positive impact, to be a blessing. Let's choose not just to be blessed, but to be a blessing. How about that? Well, God bless you. I pray that this will make you a day. Have a blessed and a fruitful day.